Hey everyone, Colleen Patrick Adro here, vegan author and educator, animal advocate. And I've been having some computer issues and some phone issues, so hopefully this won't be a problem. And I just wanted to make sure that you know about our vegan Q&A. Um, number one, you can go to joyfulvegan.com and get your Joyful Vegan Starter Guide and you can share that with anybody you know if people are asking you about veganism whether it's on World Vegan Day today or just in general, people are asking you about what it means to be vegan. Um, certainly go to joyfulvegan.com and you can get your own Joyful Vegan Starter Guide. Number two, you can share this video right away with your peeps on Facebook so that people who are on your page and follow your page can join in the conversation. Number three, I'm gonna make a few announcements, just really quick ones that I think you'll like. And uh, in the meantime, why don't you start thinking about your own questions and then we can just um, jump right in. So I hope you're all doing really well. It's a beautiful evening here in Northern California. Oh, you're so sweet, Angela. And um, just a couple things. Number one is the newest podcast episode for Food for Thought just went live today. So if you're interested on my thoughts about traveling ethically, ethical tourism, compassionate travel, whatever you want to call it. And specifically, I'm talking about Thailand, although it does pertain, there's lots of things I say that pertains to traveling in general. Um, go listen to Food for Thought, the new episode. You can, of course, listen on iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or SoundCloud or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can just go to uh, ColleenPatrickAdro.com or JoyfulVegan.com and, uh, and just listen right there. So that's number one. Number two, I uh, took a quick ride into San Francisco today, recorded a new uh, commentary, radio commentary, about um, helping animals in our backyards, what we can do in our suburban and urban neighborhoods. So as soon as that airs, I will let you know. Very excited about that. I do a monthly radio commentary with my uh, national public radio station here in San Francisco Bay Area, and I'm very proud to do that. I love going to the studio. I absolutely love going to the radio studio. If you haven't figured it out, I really love the medium of, of radio, audio. That's why I've been doing a podcast for 13 years. So, uh, so I really love going into KQD. And it's really fun when neighbors, especially local neighbors and friends, just hear me on the radio and uh, get a perspective about animals that perhaps they haven't had before. So, um, so that's number two, I think. Hi, everybody. I'm going to say hi to you in just a second and let me know where you're from so I can say hi to you and, um, and just get your questions ready because it'll be fun to just jump right in as soon as I'm finished. Number three, um, what was number three? Number three is, by the way, I am going to be in Texas in El Paso. I know it's pretty far east. Uh, it's far east, right? Yeah, it's pretty far east relative to the other cities in uh, Texas um, uh, in November. So I will be speaking at the uh, El Paso Vegetarian Society's Thanksgiving event. So if you're in the area and you want to join, you can go to the El Paso Vegetarian Society's website and you can join the dinner and I'll be flying in and speaking and then flying right back out the next morning. So um, I'm excited to do that. And I'll also be in Arizona in um, I think January, uh, January or February. So go check my website, joyfulvegan.com and click on events. And of course, we are filling up, we are almost filled up. We had several new signups since the Thailand trip and um, Vietnam is still available. So if you wanna travel with me to Vietnam, five star um, trip, kind of once in a lifetime, kind of life altering. Um, it was a pretty amazing experience. Uh, of course, um, you can hear some of it on the episode I just did on ethical travel, but I'll be doing more on, on being vegan in Thailand too. I really wanted to get out the information about traveling ethically and related to animals as, as soon as possible. So that's why I did that episode first. And then um, I'm, I'll be doing other episodes on uh, being vegan in Thailand, which of course is a breeze. And we happen to be there during uh, their vegetarian week, uh, vegetarian month, vegetarian week, vegetarian event. Uh, and that made it even more awesome. So Hey everybody, so welcome again, Colleen Patrick Goudreau here, vegan author and educator. Um, I'm excited to hear your questions. Um, every day is World Vegan Day for me. Uh, I've been vegan for um, almost 20 years and uh, and of course it's just a part of my life. It's just a part of 
who I am. It's just an extension of who I am, a manifestation of who I am, a reflection of who I am and what I care about, what my values are. Uh, but uh, today is officially World Vegan Day, November 1st. Uh, I believe it's around Gandhi's birthday. I think that's how the day was uh, created. So if you have any questions, of course, I'd love to hear them and would be happy to answer any questions you have. So Angela says, I love when um, this pops up when you're working late. I love it. Hello, Maria from Portugal. Welcome. Uh, Brand Brandy loves my webpage. Thanks, Brandy. Um, and Angela said she forwarded that podcast um, to my boss as he loves visiting, not my boss, to Angela's. Angela said, I'll quote, I forwarded that podcast to my boss as he loves visiting Thailand. He's not vegan yet, but I keep trying. Great. And you don't have to be vegan to travel ethically. I mean, that will, that will, that will make your travels the most consistent, but at least, even if you're not vegan yet, uh, at least knowing some of the most egregious forms of animal cruelty, of course, number one is the animals we consume. We bring animals into this world only to kill them, which is pretty egregiously cruel in my opinion, and there's also uh, and forms of entertainment that are egregiously cruel uh, and inherently cruel. There's really no way to go about uh, training an elephant to be ridden, training an elephant to, uh, to work in the logging industry, with without breaking their spirit first. And in, in, in fact, um, in order to have elephants um, submit to humans training them in this way, they actually go through what in their own language in Thai is called uh, the pos the pajan, which stands for, uh, which means the crush. And it literally is the breaking of an elephant's spirit, the, the crushing of their spirit. And it starts with crushing the spirits of babies. And the process is quite torturous and it's horrific. And you know, none of us want to look at the videos. We don't want to look at the fit photos because it's too painful. But if we can't look at the photos, but we support it, uh, then you know, there's, there's a disconnect there. And, and, uh, and I'm all for connections. So listen to the episode. Of course, um, I always am mindful of how much we are able to hear without being without turning it off so I hope you'll go listen and at least get enough information to to be compelled to really stop this form of cruelty uh, you know in Thailand and really whenever you travel uh, animal related travel is becoming more prevalent as as companies and tour companies and tour operators are aware that people want this experience of having their pictures taken with animals because everything is about documenting our lives for social media so they're aware that people want selfies with animals and so it's 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 pretty harmful and uh, uh, once we know, then we can do better. So that's um, that's why I did this episode, and I really hope you you will listen. So you can go again, go find food for thought on iTunes, or you can just go to joyfulvegan.com and find it there. Hello, Jose from Costa Rica. Um, uh, I want to say your name right, Kalyani, Kalyani from um <laughs> says i love you thank you um michael from san diego of course hi michael um please come to the uh, come to aruba finally i can see a vegan movement there that is really really exciting it's happening everywhere isn't it it's just happening everywhere and um it really takes the actions of all of us to make this possible and to spread the word so thanks to everybody who's spreading the word everywhere they are uh, Brandy's in Warren, Michigan. Excited to hear, read something new. Awesome. Uh, Nikki says, hola. Uh, Lynn says, hi, Colleen. Looking beautiful as usual. You're so sweet, Lynn. It's just all in the lighting. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my take. Uh, and Brandy says, how easy is it to keep children healthy and get all their nutrients on a vegan diet? Um, let me answer that one first, Brandy, and then I'll go to the next questions. Um, and I'm going to try to do this quick fire. But um, in short, the nutrients we need are plant-based, number one. Flat out, number one end of sentence, period, full stop. The nutrients we need are plant-based, not animal-based. The only nutrients we need that are not plant-based are vitamin B12 and vitamin D. Vitamin B12 is not uh, animal-based, it's bacteria-based. And vitamin D is, you know, is basically a hormone that's activated in our own bodies from the sun. So those two vitamins, again, not animal-based, so, so absolutely the nutrients we need are plant-based. So e eating a whole foods plant-based diet means that we're getting getting all of the nutrients we need. And then of course, you know, supplementing as insurance, which is what all of us do because we eat d in such a different way every day. So just taking vitamins as a, um, per, you know, just as insurance. When it comes to children, there are not different, um, 
uh, recommendations for nutrition. The, the nutritional guidelines for children are not, for vegan children are not different than the nutritional guidelines for non-vegan children. So does that make sense? So that's the no number one thing to understand. It's not, they're not different. It's just a matter of where you're getting the nutrients. Right now what we're doing is going through the animals to get to the nutrients that the animals get because the animals eat plants. So what we need to do is skip the middle animal because when we go through the animal to get to our nutrients, not only are we not getting those nutrients, uh, we're not absorbing them as well because taking in nutrients is not just about taking them in, it's also about not losing them and absorbing them. So number one, we're not absorbing them as well when uh, we go through the animal to get to the nutrients that are plant-based. And number two, uh, we're also taking in problematic uh, substances like dietary cholesterol, like uh, saturated fat, like uh, animal protein, all of which are problematic. So when we skip the middle animal and go directly to the source, we actually get everything we need and that includes children. So just follow the guidelines. Of course, in my 30-day vegan challenge, I have an entire chapter. Um, I have well I have I have an entire chapter specifically on children but in every chapter that's about a single nutrient I also talk about what the recommendations are these are again general guidelines the recommendations from the USDA from uh, from the um, uh, yeah, um, experts what the nutritional guidelines are so you can find that in the 30-day vegan challenge and of course in a, any other book that's written uh, about veganism uh, for children so I hope that helps you um, Jill says, I think you've shared, it's really hard, I'm wearing this striped shirt, so like every other sentence is in on my white line, so it's hard for me to read these, sorry. I think you've shared before, uh, but could you provide a quick reminder of the cosmetics brands you recommend and use? Oh, sure. Um, so I use, number one, The Body Shop, number two, um... 100% uh, pure. Number three, I've been using some cosmetics from Thrive Cosmetics, and they donate a portion of um, the, their proceeds to, um, I think, uh, organizations that work to stop domestic violence against women. So it's called Thrive Cosmetics, and the the products that I use from Thrive are vegan. They have um, they have products that have animal products in them, but I obviously get the ones that are vegan, and they don't test on animals. So Thrive Cosmetics, The Body Shop, 100% uh, Pure, and Aveda. I also get some of the products from Aveda, and it depends on what it is. If it's like lip or cheek or <laughs> eye, um, I, I vary. Depending. Um, Angela says, did you have lots of kitties willing to make the trek up your house last night? It's really funny. I um, I sat first. We we have a very special street. We actually have a destination street uh, here in Oakland where people from other neighborhoods in Oakland come to our street. I mean, this happens in cities all around. It's very strange to me because I grew up in New Jersey where, you know, at a time when every, you know, you just trick-or-treated on your street and in your neighborhood but people actually come to our neighborhood to trick-or-treat so a lot of the neighbors are just on the street and we all have kind of parties and you know my neighbors get pizza and we have wine and beer and everything so I was down on the street this time with my neighbors across the street first and then went down the street to my other neighbors. So there were just lots of little parties going on. So I I spared people coming up the steps. There were a couple times. It's so funny to watch them. I was sitting across the street with my friends and I was looking up and watching people look up to the house and I could see them going like, I don't know, it seems too far. I don't really want to go up there. <laughs> so a couple times I had to stop people because the kids are really eager to go and uh, and run up the stairs. But I spared I spared anybody from doing so. What, Aubrey, that is just so sweet. It's whatever you see, it's just a, an illusion. Uh, Liv, hi Liv, says still alive after almost two years as vegan. You are? That's amazing, Liv. It's amazing. That's awesome. Adrian says, hi Colleen, how is your mom? She's in our thoughts. Thank you so much. That's really thoughtful. It's, it's, hard, it's hard every day thinking about my mom being in a nursing home. Um, I uh, I really struggle with it every day. Not struggle because I'm doing the wrong thing, but struggle because um, it's just really hard that I can't be there every day. Um, right now, a, a lot of my focus is on selling her place, and I'm in uh, negotiations with a buyer, and I'm really hoping um, that's going to go through because we need the money to pay for her nursing home. Um, the reason she's in New Jersey and I'm in California is mainly because her boyfriend uh, is 15 minutes, and he goes there several times a week. He was just he actually took her out yesterday. Uh, <laughs> This is probably too much information, but my mom lost her teeth. She lost her, uh, she's had dentures for a long time, or at least a temporary thing for a long time. She was in a car accident many, many years ago. She's had teeth problems for like 
forever, as long as I've known her. So she lost her teeth. And uh, her boyfriend, Paul, um, brought her to go get new teeth. Uh, so I was just really glad he took her out. I was really, I'm really hoping he's gonna be able to take her out more and more and, um, and hopefully that will happen. So I talk to her several times a week. I do a Skype with her once a week. Um, Paul sees her several times a week, but my mother was a very, very, very social person and not being able to speak uh, because of the stroke she had, for those who don't know, is, um, is very difficult. It's very difficult for her, but um, you know, we're doing the best we can and she's in a safe place. And of course that's, that's really the number one thing. And they're taking care of her physical needs, but in terms of her emotional needs, that's just a little harder to gauge and to measure. So thank you for asking. I really appreciate it. Do keep her in your thoughts. I, it means a lot to me. Um, Aubrey says, Colleen was, uh, uh, your husband always vegan or did you get him on the boat um, you know my husband so like I think like all relationships you know we get together to share um, to share with each other and to inspire each other and that was certainly the case with my husband and I around food issues I was vegetarian he was not when we met and uh, and I wasn't vegan when we met so I um, had my journey to veganism first and then of course brought him the information that inspired me and being the open compassionate person he is he was willing to look at it and read it himself and, and watch and bear witness and so as a result of the information I brought him and certainly having already been a model for someone who um, as someone who you know had just gone vegan it was easy for him to make the transition so I'm very lucky I'm very grateful I'm very happy that um, my husband uh, is you know of of like minds um, it certainly makes our life not only easier or my life easier but it makes it more enjoyable and it just makes me um, really respect him uh, even more and again it's you know it's a testament to his openness and uh, and I I you know I really don't take credit for it uh, but I did bring him the information and that's what we all do in relationship with each other and the reason I say I don't take credit for it is because it would also mean that I would take the blame for those in my life who I have brought information to who didn't become vegan and it's I'm not responsible for it it's really a matter of who's open and, and ready at that moment but of course I keep doing my advocacy and if they respond to it um, that's uh, that's awesome so uh, yeah, so that's how it worked. Um, Brandy says yes and thank you. Uh, my daughter has chosen not to eat meat due to harming them. I just wanna um, ensure she's okay, of course. And of course, Brandy, really important information to ask and uh, just really make sure you share, you, you together look at the resources so that you can feel confident and so that she has the information. But you know, I always say that you don't have to be an expert in nutrition to understand this. It's very basic. The nutrients we need are plant-based. All of the nutrients we need, you know, these are minerals when we think of calcium, we think of iron these are all minerals in the soil and uh, the best thing we could do is go directly to the sources uh, to get the nutrients that um, that are there in the plants uh, um, Jill says mascara is the hardest to find I find a mascara the hardest to find not from a vegan perspective but just from a it's not annoying and clumping perspective I did do a couple times like the eyelash extensions I just have no patience to go once every few weeks to lie there and get my eyelashes done I just have other ways I'd rather spend my time and money and uh, and I have no patience for it so that was actually the best thing I ever did in terms of not having to deal with mascara because I hate clumping mascara to me that's the hardest thing to find I do use the body shop mascara and actually right now I'm trying thrive cosmetics uh, mascara and hopefully it's I like it I like it maybe it's me maybe it's the maybe it's user error maybe it's the way I apply it <laughs> but uh, I have problems with it oh Katya thank you it's very sweet Adrian, good smiles, Rebecca, hello. Jose, have you come to Costa Rica or plan to come at some point? Please visit um, for a lecture. Jose, I have not been to Costa Rica, but it does um, come up a lot in our conversations around our next CPG trips. We're always talking about what our next CPG trips are and Costa Rica is on the list for us. Uh, we wanna make sure it's a, it's a good experience, it's a fabulous experience. Uh, and I just have only heard wonderful things about Costa Rica from people who have, have visited and of course there's a lot to talk about around animal issues and sanctuaries to visit I, uh, I would love to give a lecture also when I'm there I certainly love to be able to do something like that whenever um, we travel is to also uh, you know also make a an educational opportunity around it or advocacy opportunity did I win Brittany did I win best podcast I didn't even know you're talking about veg news that's awesome did I really 
that's so cool. I don't know. It's been kind of, um, I think that's like, I don't know, fifth year in a row or something. Food for thought. My baby, my 13 year old baby. That's awesome. If that's what you're talking about. I'm going to guess it was food for thought and not animology, but I don't know. I haven't heard it from anybody. No one's told me that I won. That's so funny. Hi, Brandy. And Jose says, well, not only lecturing, of course, um, it's a beautiful country and uh, veganism is growing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Dawn says tart mascara, um, T-A-R-T-E. Am I saying that correctly? And Wet n Wild is vegan now. That's awesome, Dawn. I have a good friend who uses Wet n Wild uh, nail polish and it lasts forever. You know, I'll go to the salon and get, you know, I use obviously vegan uh, nail polish, but it's more expensive than Wet n Wild and the Wet n Wild lasts forever. That's very cool. Uh, Rebecca says, do you have any recommendations on where I can find cruelty-free clothing? Rebecca, can you be more specific around cruelty-free clothing? Are you talking about clothing that doesn't use wool or leather or silk? Uh, let me know what you mean specifically so I can answer your question. Um, Brittany says, yeah, oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you, Veg News. And it's really the Veg News readers, right? Because I think it's a um, reader's survey. So for those of you who voted for best podcast for Food for Thought, thank you. I'm really proud of that. Uh, as I said, the new uh, podcast episode just went out today. I've got more lined up. I've got some animology podcasts I've got to get out there. And I've got a new episode coming up, uh, an interview coming up with Camilla Fox from Project Coyote around the work that they're doing. Um, and a, there was a really big victory today uh, with California Wildlife Services to um, basically halt the the indiscriminate killing of, of wildlife to protect livestock. So, um, so lots of good things to talk to her about. If you're not already following Project Coyote, I don't care where you are. They're based here in California and, uh, but they're, they're a national organization and they're doing tremendous, fabulous, fantastic, important, life-saving work, uh, for, for wildlife. So, um, so please go follow Project Coyote and you'll hear more about that in, uh, upcoming episode of Food for Thought. Um, Jill says, last time I checked out Body Shop, all mascaras contained honey. Really? I haven't bought the Body Shop mascara in a while. Like I said, I've been using the um, Thrive Cosmetics now. I don't, I'd, I'd be surprised it contained honey. I really would be surprised that the, because you don't want mascara to have like honey. You mean, maybe just beeswax is maybe what you mean. Um, agree on the clumping. Surely there are other points uh, to ponder in life, but appreciate you commenting on this. No problem. Um, sock Psalm is great for cruelty-free clothing. I have to sneeze, everybody. So you're just going to have to think about your questions while I sneeze. It's not coming out. It's not coming out. I hope you guys all had a fabulous Halloween. What were the um, candies you handed out? I really struggle. I said to my neighbor, who's not vegan, who's a very good friend, and she's not vegan, and I am, um, but she's very supportive. And she said, to, I said to her, it's really hard. Like when I, like on Halloween, I want to do something more meaningful than just hand out candy. I I had stickers also. If I were, yeah. If I were doing more of it, like from my house, I would do more of like just handing out stickers because I want there to be a level of anonymity. I don't want parents to see me putting vegan stickers in their kids' uh, bowl. So like if I were of the house just handing it out, I would do more of that. But of course, the candy I handed out were, was vegan and um, and it was really fun to see all the kids. There were so many cute kids dressed up. Oh my God, they were so cute and it was fun. There were a lot of little animals and um, we would have little animal conversations because I was dressed up as a deer um, or I had my deer antlers and... Anyway, uh, I gave out airheads, which I think are disgusting, and kids love them. Like when, so my friend had a bowl of chocolate, it was all non-vegan chocolate, and I had my bowl of like airheads and Dum Dum lollipops, and uh, and um, and uh, Smarties. And the kids would kind of rifle through the bowl, and I would say, "Pick what you want," and they would see the airheads and be like, "Oh yeah, airheads!" Like that would be the number one thing they wanted. I think they're absolutely disgusting. That's my opinion. It's my opinion. What did you guys hand out for Halloween? Morgan says, um, your cookbooks, podcasts, and beautiful words have been such a comfort and inspiration through this journey. I'm so very thankful for you. I'm curious about finding the right fit in terms of activism. I'm somewhat introverted, but want to, and then you get cut off. I could probably look on the Facebook page right here, but I think I get the gist. Um, so I do have podcast, and thank you, Morgan, very much for your kind words. I do have podcast episodes on 
forms of activism and how to get involved. So I would really encourage you to check out Food for Thought podcast, the award-winning Food for Thought podcast, um, because I do have episodes that specifically guide people into um, kind of picking the best form of activism for themselves. And you know, a lot of what I say is that it's based on what you love, what you think you'd be able to contribute, like what your skills are and what your passions are. I think um, we are the best advocates when we enjoy what we're doing. Uh, and of course, making sure that we're doing it sustainably. There are some forms of activism and some activists I see out there who I feel are cross the line in terms of martyrdom and it worries me because I don't think it's sustainable I don't think they uh, experience the joy that you could experience when you're doing the kind of activism that feeds you rather than depletes you and that's not to say that there aren't forms of activism that are just gonna be hard and painful we should always make sure that we're stretching our comfort zones but not doing it in a way that's gonna actually make us feel angry and uh, and depleted so I mean those are kind of my general guidelines for finding activism that that feeds you and uh, and 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 you know, finding joy in that. I think that's really, um, I think that's really the best advice I could give. And because there are so many different forms of activism. I mean, is someone knocking? Oh, it's a, it's a J. It sounded like someone was knocking, but it's actually a bird. So there's so many forms of activism and um, there's no dearth at all. And if you try something and it's not for you, then there are lots of other ways to get involved as well. Just don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing is wrong uh, or ineffective because everything is needed out there. And uh, and again, do something that brings you joy because I think, um, I really think that, um, that, that you emanating an authentic joy, not an inauthentic joy is also what's going to be attractive uh, to people who, who may be uh, curious. I hope that helps. But there's lots of information on the podcast. Um, Tom says hello from Springfield, uh, Missouri. Hello, Tom. We handed out Smarties and Jolly Ranchers and Blow Pops. I'll pretend I didn't have all three. <laughs> I know. I actually had also some double bubble gum left over from last year. They were kind of stale, but I had some double bubble. I didn't have any, actually I actually think part of my strategy also, and I'm not kidding you, part of my strategy in choosing the candies I did, I only had a little bit of the Smarties. It was mostly the Dum Dums and Airheads and some of the double bubble. Part of my strategy is to buy candy that I won't eat, that I don't like, because I don't want to eat the candy. So uh, so I was actually really glad I didn't have any vegan chocolate candy. I confess that I wait a little too long by the time I uh, start thinking about what to order for, um, for, for Halloween. So I didn't get any good like vegan chocolate candy. But um, but it was really great. I wasn't tempted to eat any of the candy I bought because I don't like any of them. Blow pops I would have eaten. So and like, but like the dum dums. Remember dum dum lollipops? <laughs> All the kids picked them though. They were so cute. I'd say you can pick, and I'd make them. It was really funny because the kids would come up to me, and I was sitting on the curb, so I was really low. So I was like at their level. So the kids would come, and they, some some of them would say trick or treat, and when they did, I would say I want a trick. So give me a trick. And some of them did. Like the trick part of trick or treat really has more to do with. If you, if you don't give them a treat, they'll they'll do some kind of trick where it's a little nefarious, where they're um, you know where they're like I don't know throwing eggs at your house or something like that. So uh, it's something mischievous. So the the treat basically says, okay, I'll give you a treat so you don't do anything mischievous. But I was just doing it in a different way, and so they'd come up and they'd say trick or treat, and I'd say I want a trick, and they would tell a joke or sing a song, and it was adorable because they loved it. They weren't like, oh, I don't know anything. Just give me a treat. They actually, the teenagers and the children were actually really open to doing a trick. <laughs> so it's really cute. And then I'd still give them a treat. Um, but also some would come up and they wouldn't say trick or treat. And I'd be like, I, what? I, I'm not giving you a treat until I hear it. What do you, what do you, what do you say? So it was really playful and it was really fun. And I loved all the little kids who came. I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time. Um, Michael says, happy World Vegan Day every day, everybody. Let's all ramp up for November and advocate veganism. Lots of good stuff happening. Indeed, I second what Michael says. Michal, hello, Michal. Michal is a wonderful supporter of the podcast. Michal is one of the reasons the podcast exists because she supports it. Anybody who wants to join Michal and support the podcast, you can do so at patreon.com. Um, and like I said, I've got lots of great episodes coming up. So if you want to support even this, I mean, you know, doing these live Facebook videos, like you're 
your uh, patronage supports all of the advocacy I do so thank you and uh, she says it's my fifth one as a vegan and it's all thanks to you well it's all thanks to you we'll love fest thank you and you're welcome but thank you and thank you I love it happy veganversary uh, Danita says we gave out Smarties and Skittles till we ran out yeah I wanted to get Skittles but I couldn't get them or find them and I'm glad I didn't because I would have eaten the Skittles. I do like Skittles. I do like Skittles a lot. Um, then we gave out two shiny quarters to each kid after that and they flipped out excited to get money. That's really good to hear, Danita, because I want to do something different. I, so I would always saying that I said to my friends that I, I got sidetracked. But I said to my friend, yeah, like I want to do something meaning, meaningful. And she's like, yeah, that, today's not the holiday for that. And I'm like, I don't know. I think every holiday is an opportunity to do something meaningful. Every day is. Every, every moment is. So um, I love that you handed out quarters. And that is so awesome to hear that they were excited. Uh, because like I said, like even when I would put the bowl out and I would say to them like, hey, happy Halloween, and they'd say trick or treat, and I'd say, oh, pick a piece of candy. They would very carefully like look and pick which piece of candy they wanted. They were, I mean, some kids grabbed like handfuls, and I was like, whoa. But for the most part, they were just being really methodical about which piece of candy they picked, and it really dashed all my assumptions that they're just, you know, they don't care, that they get all the treats they want all the time, that, you know, they're just, uh, this is just another holiday. It was a Adorable. They were super sweet. So hearing that they were really excited about the, the quarter just gives me hope. <laughs> I just really like that. Angela says, my boss, my boss just called, heard in the background that I was watching. He wanted to say that he is sure the elephants are still being used and ridden in the sanctuary. He's not ready to uh, see the harm in riding horses and elephants. Um, no, tell your boss, Mr. Boss, Mr. Angela's boss, riding horses, completely different story to riding elephants. Let's just put that aside and focus on riding elephants. Um, there are places that call themselves sanctuaries that are riding the elephants. They're not sanctuaries. So please know that I talk about this in the podcast is um, how to differentiate between the sanctuaries for elephants that are true sanctuaries and those that are calling themselves uh, orphanages or refuges or sanctuaries. They're not sanctuaries. Um, I saw throughout uh, Thailand a lot of places that advertised elephant rides or elephant parks, elephant sanctuaries, they would call themselves elephant parks, um, said no riding. So there really is a movement toward the elephant parks realizing that there's a market for uh, for tourists who want to interact with elephants without causing them um, harm. And riding them causes them harm. Once they're in true sanctuaries like Elephant Nature Park, like Phuket Elephant Sanctuary, like Boon Lot uh, Elephant Sanctuary, um, th those uh, that went out outside of Chiang Mai, uh, they are not ridden. They are allowed to live out the rest of their lives. These elephants have been broken. They are domesticated at this point. They can never be released back into the wild, and that's something we did and we caused, but we caused, we perpetuated by supporting the elephant rides, and we perpetuated because the more they think there's a market, the more they're gonna break elephants and take them from the wild. There are 3,000 elephants left in the wild in Thailand. There were 100,000 100 years ago. So in just 100 years, we have decimated the elephant population, uh, both both decimating the population itself and and uh, wiping out the forest. So no, it is, there, is, there is no reason to not move forward to change this for elephants. There is still hope. There is something we can still do. And supporting elephant rides just says that you don't care and you're just going to throw up your hands and be part of the problem rather than part of the solution. So you can still interact with elephants if that's what you need to do. Uh, I know it was incredible to go to the sanctuaries and be able to interact with them, but on their terms, not because they were being beaten, not because they were being hurt. And so uh, that is, uh, that's the, that's where we're at today. It's not unlike the the tourism that happens around, um, you know, safaris and going to see animals in their natural habitat. People will pay to contribute to um, to seeing animals, but in a way that doesn't cause them harm. So, Mr. Boss, please at least hear that much and uh, at least make a commitment to not ride elephants. <laughs> like it doesn't affect us on our in our daily lives to say I'm willing to say that elephant riding isn't ethical and uh, and I'm willing to at least not do that if I go to Thailand. So, I mean, that's the least we could do. That's the least we could do to help animals. Um, Kirsten, yay, you're back. Hello. Can't wait to hear the latest podcast. Yay. Thanks, Kirsten. On my ferry to work, listening to you. What a treat. That's awesome. I love it. 
Um, thanks, Kirsten. Claude says, on this vegan world day, please know that you were the first to inspire me. Hearing your speech in a gym many years ago made me realize that I too could be vegan. Thank you always for the inspiration. That is such a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. Thank you so much. Wow, that means so much to me, everybody. And um, thank you, Claude, so much. That's, I think, a beautiful note to end on. Um, you're all an inspiration to me. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting my work. Thank you for being open. Thank you for being kind and compassionate. Even Mr. Angela's boss, who I know uh, we all want to do the right thing. You know, that's just what it's about. It's about doing the best we can. There are so many ways we hurt animals but there are so many things we can do to like just stop and a lot of it just has to do with just like just not like you know interfering with them there's just so much we can do and uh, and at least starting with you know getting animals off our plates and just being uh, willing to look through a different lens of compassion and kindness uh, rather than exploitation and uh, and you know selfishness because it's really what it comes down to uh, and that's where my hope lies is that there is a lot we can do you know it's really sad of course to be in Thailand and to see all of the um, the ways in which um, we just have <laughs> made choices that have long-term effects on individual lives. You know, elephants live as long as we do. And some of these animals have been in uh, these exploitative industries for 20, 30, 40 years. Imagine that. And that's one of the things we're going to do in Vietnam is we're going to go to the sanctuaries for the bear, uh, the bears who've been kept in cages. Also, 20 years being kept in a cage that is the size of your own body. Imagine that and having a catheter uh, permanently Im embedded in your gallbladder to drain out your bile. These are the kinds of decisions we make like I think we can do better than that so that's what, what my plea is is to just be the best people we can be and live according to the values we say we have we all believe ourselves to be compassionate good people well if that's the case then we just need to manifest that compassion and reflect that perception uh, in our everyday reality and so that's my hope for for all of us that includes me we're all uh, just doing the best we can so uh, thanks everyone have a wonderful night this light is just incredible it's my favorite time of day and um, I'm grateful to all of you for all of your uh, compassion and for your voice and thank you for um, being a voice for animals for the animals this is Colleen Patrick Adro thanks for watching everyone